Hello guys, this is ZXYC here and today we're going to be talking about team fighting with Tinker. So this video will incorporate how to position, how to space in team fights, uh, how to use your spells, how to even use your blink, so spell usage, blink usage, and just general team fighting guide. guide. Alright, so let's just say you have Lens and Aghanims. So generally speaking, what you want to do with Reach Rearm is you want to be casting Missile and you want to be trying to get a laser off. So if you're super, super far from the fight, you'll probably be doing something like this. You'll blink in, you'll missile, you'll rearm, and then you can blink in again, missile, and now you're close enough to the fight, you know, something like that. But generally speaking, what you would do is as follows. I'm going to un WTF. So you'd blink in, just so that, let's just say the fight is breaking out here, where this box is. Okay? So if the, bo if the fight is here, most heroes are in this area. You want to be like here, like that's the closest you want to be. So what you want to do is you want to missile, try to laser anything. Look, you can see the cast range is really huge just because I have the talent and that's because I also have lens. So I can cast it from really, really far, but laser usually won't be that far. If you have lens, of course, yeah, only 75 cast range, so it's not a big deal. So if you have lens and ags, it's actually a lot easier to space fights. So you'd end up lasering. As soon as you laser, it depends. If you walked in, you'll laser blink back. If you blinked in, of course, you'll laser missile, like maybe take a step back depending on where they are. Rearm. Rearm is the most important thing. And then there you reassess and decide whether you want to go in or back. If you want to go in, you'd walk in. So even if you want to go in, there's different ways to go in. You'd missile, laser, and then blink back or blink forward depending on that. If you really want to go in, you blink in right in between them. Blizzard, missile. That's of course if, if they're all super low and the fight's like at its end. And you just want to just deal that that little bit of extra damage to just finish off the fight. So with each rearm, what I'm trying to say in team fights, with each rearm, you have to assess whether you want to go in or out, and what you want to do with blink and what you want to do with laser. Of course, missiles just going to be shot, so that doesn't matter. There's not much assessment there. You're just going to shoot out the missile, but the assessment will come with blinking, whether you want to go in or out with it, whether you want to walk in, cast laser first, then blink out. Or not right so all this stuff will always be considered so consider how you're gonna laser consider how you're gonna blink every time you rearm if the fight is coming to you this is of course if you guys are like kind of like fighting if you're fighting and, and you got to the fight late or if the team's already fighting and of course you see that March isn't gonna do much like the team like the enemy team is already trying to get back then you don't really waste your mana marching it's already 190 mana it's gonna be a lot uh, you just end up just rearming missling and lasering only if they're disengaging if they're coming at your team, like if let's just say you just TP'd here and they're, the fight is breaking out here and they're coming at your team, then what you would do is you would march, missile, and then laser, and maybe blink back and then rearm and then repeat again. Alright? It depends on how the, the fight is going. And, and it depends on if you're going to be uh, marching or not. So one thing to keep in your head is, am I marching this fight or am I not? Another thing to consider is what am I doing in my blink? Am I going in with it or am I using it defensively? Am I walking my hero in, lasering and then blinking to, to reposition myself? Or am I just blinking in and lasering, all that stuff? And of course, you can see that blink is, is, is being mentioned a lot in conjunction with laser. So with laser, it's like, oh, am I blinking in and lasering or am I lasering and then blinking out? So how am I even using my laser? And of course, for targeting laser uh, without AGs, <clears throat> You're going to be mostly using it either to damage someone or to blind the core. That's it. But with Ags, it's less about that. And it's just about getting the the, the, the bounces off. So you just want to get the bounces off. So you'd laser probably whatever's closest to you. As long as you, you just get those bounces off, everyone's, um, everyone's blind and stuff. So that's a generalization of team fights, of course. So again, just to keep in mind, it's whenever you're rearming, if you think about marching, if you think about blinking, lasering, all that stuff. Uh, missling, of course, will just be spammed. Uh, don't forget to use your soaring whenever possible. And don't forget to keep that mental checklist in your head. What am I scared of, right? So don't go in, don't blink in if you haven't seen the hero that you're scared of yet. If you haven't seen the storm jump yet, uh, try not to show your hero, right? Because storm will just probably be sitting there waiting for you to show. So if you're scared of a storm, don't show your hero. Just cast your spells at the back. And generally speaking, then against the storm, what I would do is I would walk in, cast my spell, and then blink. Because as soon as I showed, you know he wants to zip on you. So you're just going to blink to some random corner 
and you're, you're not showing your hero. Then maybe walk in again, cast, and then blink again. Something like that is pretty good against the storm. Because if you blink in first and cast your spells, of course they'll just jump you. You have no escape anymore. The only time I blink in and cast is either he's showing or it's going to win me the fight anyways. Even if Storm jumps me, who cares? I got my good laser missile off. Most people are dead and Storm can't kill me from full to zero with my team around. So yeah, all these things. Of course the mental checklist, who you're scared of, who you're not. And blade mails. Consider blade mails when you're spamming your spells. And uh, maybe even consider big, picking up a Yules if you're against Blade Mills, anything like that. So this is just a generalization of team fighting um, and itemization and all that stuff. And so he TPs in. So first of all, he does this really aggressive TP here. TP is right in. He doesn't even have Blink yet, by the way. So he can't even reposition. So this TP was super dangerous. Of course, he felt like it was okay. But I, I, I don't know, it was a scary TP to take in, but the reason why you have to do it and why I feel like I would have done it too is because like his team is just going in. Like you have to follow up, right? Like you don't want your team to fight 4v5, so you just have to do this risky TP or you can't see anything. They can't see up the hill. If there was a ward here, obviously the TP would have been a lot better or maybe your team would have been able to see all of them and been like, okay, I need to back up. This looks like a bad team fight to take. But since there's no ward, there's no information, and your team's just going in, so I guess you just have to follow up with TP. And you have no blink, so you can see he's just like, he's just stuck here. So what he did was, as soon as he came in, he shot a missile, he marched, and now he's rearming. And this is as soon as he came in, and you can see right here, there's a skewer coming. Yeah, so it's gonna be a skewer RP, and it's 90% chance it's gonna hit him. So let's see what happens here, and of course, um... What the Magnus will do is probably just Shockwave, the Nyx comes out, and probably will be hitting the Tinker, because that's who you want to go on. Just remember, the Grave is up, so we'll see what happens. So the RP does end up happening. He does go on the Tinker, gets Graved, exactly as I said, but he's still dead, right? He has no Blink, he has no, no survivability. So he ends up falling. He did buy the Blink, so that's always nice, he didn't lose too much. But yeah, like that, that, that TP was so dangerous, and the lack of vision, and the fact that it was nighttime. All this stuff coming together, of course, ended up being, ended up resulting in him being really, really out of position. So Steam is pushing again with the Aegis. They used Metamorphosis already, so they committed. Okay, so let me just talk about this. Um, he showed up really late. Like you can see, by the time he's TPing, his team is already getting jumped. Yeah. So he walked back. I like that. Uh, he rearmed. He could have marched then rearmed, and then he walked back in. What? Okay, so he TP'd in. I like that he walked back. He could have marched first. He rearmed, and then he walks back in, and then just gets gets into the skew RP, and then his team just gets demolished. That was an amazing RP though. He blinked here and skewered, I believe. Yeah. Well. Really, 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 really well done. Yeah. The shadow blade. Yep. Yeah, really well done. Very good RP. Still, he came too close, I feel like. Also, another thing I was, um... I mean, obviously, that's when he showed the Shadow Blade. Right? He showed the Shadow Blade here. So, now the team knows. Oh, now we know he has a Shadow Blade. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I guess you can always assume a Shadow Blade. Just get a Sentry down. The supports, maybe get a Sentry down. This whole fight would have been completely different if that RP didn't happen. But, so what he should have been doing is after he walked back and he was rearming here, first of all I would have marched real quick because he was already here. The fight already broke out, they are already here. I would have marched first, then rearmed. And then I probably would have blinked up here, right? Marched, shot missiles and rearmed. You can see I, w I didn't even laser at this point, right? I, I still didn't laser. Because who am I lasering? This guy was raged, there's no point. I just want to get the marches off, the missiles off, and then at that point decide, oh am I blinking in and lasering? Or am I, uh, you know, blinking back? Maybe because the team fight's looking really bad. It just depends at that point because that is like six seconds later. So yeah, generally you want to stay really outside the edge of the map of the, of the fight, casting march, casting missiles, and deciding whether or not you want to uh, laser and safely rearming, rearming in a safe location. He was like really too close. He walked back in and just got RP instantly died. Okay, so here this team is pushing. Uh, let's see his positioning. They did commit the meta, so that's it. They're going in. He's going to end up taking this tower really fast. So here he's really close, but that's fine. Whatever. Just start spamming your spells. Yeah, he was really close, right? 
How did they see him? He doesn't have this on him yet. So how did they see him? Alright, this jump here. I'm curious how they saw him. I'm gonna pause. And I'm gonna put on. Where's the vision? Okay, there it is. So Dyer do have a word. Yeah, they have a word of their own hill. And that's how they saw the Tinker here. So Tinker did not anticipate this. That's why he was standing here. But it, but I mean, he could just easily just be like marching. I don't know. Whatever. That doesn't matter. So he didn't anticipate this, which is why they were able to see him. I'm gonna go back to their vision only. So for their vision, of course, it looks it looked like he was, you know, not not out of position, but he looked like he was in an okay position, right? Like here, that's okay. That looked okay. And then this guy just comes sliding in, going on top of him. He gets four staffed. He gets four staffed again. He gets graved. So everything's being used on him to save him. He's using March whenever he can. Haunt was already used. So now he's in a really good position, right? Oh. And then everything goes in. He's in a really good position at the back. That was a perfect blink, by the way. So here's a really good position. They reused everything. So let me just go back again. They four staff. Four staff grave. Of course, he wasn't going to die. He rearmed. He's using March. Everything like that. He's going back in. Magnus comes in. He blinks. Right? He blinks back. I don't think Magnus even used it. Yeah, Magnus didn't even use it. Yeah. So Magnus is coming in. And then he blinks back. Magnus didn't even get the RP off. So, look. Really good position here. Once he got four staff twice. He was in a good position because they didn't have any more reach. They reused Haunt. Nakes, of course, is very easy to kite. He had no more infest. So it looked really good for him in that sense. But then, so let me just show you, after the blink back, after the blink back, here, let's see what he does. He rearms, he blinks forward, he blinks into them, and then he suicides. Let me just see this right. Let me just see this right. So, he blinks right on top of him, missiles, lasers, and then suicides. Was he close even for the heal? If he was close for the heal, that's an amazing play. He was outside of the range. I'm 90% I'm sure he was outside of the range. He didn't heal him. Let me see. Oh, he healed him. He healed him. Really good play then. Really good play. That was a good suicide. I thought he was outside of the range. I thought he didn't even heal him. But yeah, he ended up healing him. Very strong play. I like that suicide. Remember, suicide's always up. So when he blinked back here, uh, and then that was a good blink, then when he went back in, like blinking melee range, going on the specter. Of course, that was only you done because he knew he wanted to suicide. He would never have made that play if he didn't have a bloodstone. Like 100%, he would never, never make that play. And the only reason he did, as I said, is because he had a bloodstone and only because he knew he wanted suicide. Other than that, you would what you would traditionally do is stay at the back, walk in and cast your spells. Or maybe blink like to the side here where they still can't get to you. Cast your spells. But you don't blink melee range with them. Unless you want to suicide. Which is what he did. Okay. So let's see what's going on here. I'm going to slow it down. So here they're trying to get the Megas. Of course. They took down the tier 3. So all that's left is 2 racks. Uh, Spectre you can see was in the front. So the Stinker's way too close. This is way, 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 way too close. And you should be spamming March right now. Like, you should be spamming March, even from back here. Let me just pause it real quick. <laughs> I'm gonna take 10 seconds back right now, but look where the Tinker is right there. That is so bad. What is he doing? He's way, 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 way out of position. This is ridiculous. He should never, ever, ever be this close to the Terror Blade. Ever. Like, the whole fight, he should never be this close to the Terror Blade. I don't know if he does or doesn't get RP'd. You know he's there, you know he's gonna be getting ready to RP, and you know you know that you're the target, so just stay away from the Terror Blade, right? Or the Terror Blade's target, stay away, like just so as long as it doesn't get both of you, you guys are fine. So real quick, I just want to talk about the talent here. Of course, plus 100 laser damage at level 25, but this was definitely the wrong talent that he took. 15% magic resistance. They really don't have a lot of magic. They really don't. Like, like, let's look at CM, who cares? None of our spells are gonna be on you. Uh, Spectre does no magic damage, it's just Radiance. Like, this is pure. Like, no spec, like, it's everything's physical. It's physical. Yeah, so, so yeah, it's a 0 0.8 physical per 
mana burned. So everything's physical. This guy, of course, will not be doing anything to you anyways. This is pure physical. This is pure physical. So there's no magic damage at all in this team fight almost. Why would you ever get that 15%? On top of that, that cast range makes it so that you space better. It makes all these items go further. Well, not all these, but this goes further and this goes further. And on top of that, of course, laser, because you have ags, goes further. The march, which is the biggest one, you can now march further because your cast point, like their cast target space will be further, so it will go longer distance. So all these to consider, uh, definitely this was the wrong uh, talent to take. He should have taken 75 cast range. So now, enough about the talent. Let's actually talk about his spacing in this team fight. So I believe he just TP'd in. Let's see what he does. Okay, he missiles. That's fine. He should be marching, right? He should be marching. So he lasers the illusions. That's fine. He should be marching now. He rearmed before marching. He blinked in. To Hex. You see that? You see how close he blinked in? Okay, let me just show you guys how far, how far he could have been to Hex. I'm just speeding it up and then slowing it down. Okay, so here, he rearmed. Okay, you see where the Spectre is? Hex has a pretty good cast range. And if he had his talent, it would be even further. So he'd actually be able to like Hex from like here. Like to that extent. And what he ends up doing is blinking this deep to hex this guy. Way, way, way too deep. Like blinking here, just to hex him. And as soon as he did that, he didn't even start walking out. He rearmed. Gets RP'd instantly. Okay, so I never even knew, right? Like, I never saw this replay before. I didn't know he'd get RP'd, but I knew he would get RP'd. Like, I didn't actually watch the replay. That was the worst spacing, like, ever. He, that was the worst spacing. I think that that actually lost him the fight 100%. He ends up dying, of course, buying back. TPing in. Um, laser at this point is their most important thing. Now the haunt comes in. If he can blink, he might be okay. He can blink. Blink again. Nope, couldn't blink. Blink again. Ah, he's dead again. Yeah, he's just dead again. So this fight, this fight was actually lost because of Tinker. This fight was purely on him. He probably knows it too. He knows he misplayed. He knows he was out of position. He should have been staying way further back, just spamming March, spamming Missile, and lasering whenever he can. Even if you wanted to hex that Spectre, you didn't need to blink up the hill. You didn't need to blink right beside your Terrorblade, get both of you RP'd together. That was really, really, really bad. So definitely should have been staying at the back. Should have been focusing more on just casting your spells, hexing. Even if you want to hex, just walk up and hex. Spectre's not going to go anywhere. She doesn't have an instant escape, right? So you probably still would have been able to hex her. And then on top of all of that, after you died, you bought back. And then you die, you TP it and died again. So you're dead for 56, he's dead for 34, and he doesn't have Metamorphosis. So this is looking really grim right now in terms of losing racks. They're definitely going to take these racks. And I feel like you guys actually had the advantage that fight before you misplayed and uh, positioned the Tinker. So again, Tinker's super, super fragile. When playing Tinker, you have to be so careful of your spacing. You have to be so careful uh, when to cast your spells, when to cast your items, all that stuff. As as you see here, one big, one small mistake, like a small mistake like that, can just straight up lose you the game. So when you're playing heroes like this, they're very fragile, but they're very uh, like high influence in team fights. So they ended up taking mid. They kind of wanted to go for tier fours and decided against it, and they just ended up backing up. Okay, so. <clears throat> So yeah, just a, just a quick recap on this fight. Just try to space as best as you can. And uh, there's this new one here that I want to talk about. So let's just get to it like this. So what ends up here is there is a team fight that breaks out here. He gets his RP off. Tinker, of course, isn't here yet. He just TP'd in. The Haunt actually came into this fight, not on the Tinker. So he's like trying to rearm Blink. See, he's, he's misplaying here. Let me just show you what he's doing. So he TPs in, and the Haunt comes in, he should have just hexed it. I don't know what he's doing. Hex it, just hex it and move on. Your blink is down, your blink is down. Your rearm to try to blink, your blink is down, your blink is down. You still can't get into the fight. Yep, rearm, your blink is down. Like, just hex it, right? Just hex it and move on. So, since you're gonna rearm blink anyways, you definitely should have just hexed it and just been uh, in this fight faster. By the time he got here, by the time he got in the fight, his cores are already dead, both of them. And there's not much for him to do. He should just be blinking back and TPing out. There's nothing to do here. That not hexing made it so that he wasn't in the fight for way longer than he'd like. 
The one thing that's nice is, of course, Refresh was used, <laughs> and they tried to haunt on him here, and he just was TPing off, so he got out. So, of course, yeah, second haunt isn't up, but still, really, really bad. Uh, these last two fights, back-to-back, -back, were really bad for him. Um, like, his team was winning, I'd say, and now it's just a lot harder to get the map. His uh, Spectre, I believe, yeah, Spectre took the Aegis, so, again, even harder to win team fights now. And Spectre does have a refresher, so even harder to win team fights. So, okay, so Salt Team is here, and he starts to TP, I believe. So he doesn't know where they are, right? He doesn't know. This, this, just because you can see them by minimap doesn't mean anything. He has no idea where they are. They are smoked, invis, whatever, etc. He ends up TPing. Come on, TP already. Okay, so he TPs here, and right away this, the, the, the fight's gonna break out. Really good Q by the TB. Let's see what he does. He blinks forward, missiles, uh, this guy BKBs. Haunt comes in, he didn't hex it in time. So now he has this illusion on top of him. Spectre goes on, gets on top of him, BKB'd, uh, RP on his Terror Blade. He's trying to Shiva's, he's trying to blink out. Obviously he couldn't do it. Uh, he couldn't blink, and he just ends up getting uh, on top of him. So, the blink forward made it so he's really close to the Terror Blade. So when the Haunt came in, even if he hexed the illusion that was on him, uh, what Spectre did was what you guys saw. <laughs> what Spectre did was she actually... Um, she haunted to TB's illusion and went on, on uh, Tinker. She just BKB'd right at him, and he just was never able to blink out. Due to the fact that, uh, you know, all this all this ticking and stuff. And when he refreshed, like, he just... It's really hard to blink with this many stuff on top of you. Like, you're just not going to be able to time it properly half the time. So he wasn't able to blink and ended up dying. Uh, then he buys back, TP's in, and now, like, of course, gets a good laser in. Gets missiles in. Another laser here, probably. Ends up with this kill. Spectre ends up dying. So, with the buyback, of course, the buyback was good. Uh, the initial team fight, not the best spacing. He blinked in a bit too far. Um, and then all he did, all they did was BKB and run at him, pretty much. Uh, the Hex, the Hex, you always have to be ready for the Hex, that haunt. Of course, again, this time he was too close to the Terror Blades. Even if he hexed the zone, Spectre still had a way to haunt to him. Um, but if he was further like away, if he was like here, and hexed his illusion, then Spectre is not the best way to get to him. And then, like... It makes it a lot easier to deal with Spectre. But again, Spectre versus uh, Tinker. Really hard matchup for you. Okay, so let me talk about this. So, they killed them, right? They killed them all. They want to force the buyback now. But what he does here is he finds the Magnus. I guess he didn't know that, that Nyx was in him, right? So he blinks forward, hexes him, refreshes. And the, the fact that the Magnus turned around and went on you is a good indication. Rage, Haunt, buy back. So she buys back, Haunts. Due to the fact that she has Refresher, of course. And goes on top of you. He's 100% dead here. Like, he's just 100% gonna die, right? There's no way he doesn't. Oh, that was beautiful. Okay, so what the Rish <laughs> what the Spirit did was he does have an Agnims. So he stoned him and kicked him out. Which actually might make him live. We'll see. So he blinks and TP's out. That was beautiful. Okay, so he really, really was out of position. He missed position there. He was going to die 100% based on his plays. And then his teammates saved him. And uh, if he died, I think the game was over. Because he has no buyback, right? If he died, his buy he would be like a 120 second uh, timer. And um, they would just run down the lane and just finish the game. They would actually just throw in them. So this kick with, with Earth Spirit here probably saved them the game. And then the game can keep going. Really, 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 really well done. Uh, so again, Ticker was out of position. The last few fights, all of them, he's been out of position. Of course, it's really hard. I don't blame him. It's really hard to space against a, a BKB refreshing Spectre, right? Like, how are you going to space that? It's going to be really, really, really hard for you. But generally speaking, of course, uh, he's not doing the best possible. So he blinked in, lasered, missiled, refreshed. You know, just standard stuff, of course. Now he's staying at the back more. I'm pretty sure he's aware of the fact that he has no buyback. So he's playing a lot safer than he did was doing before. He's not blinking into them like melee range and doing the stuff, the shenanigans he was pulling before. The problem is this Terrorblade has to frontline. He's all alone, right? Like his Terrorblade's all alone. All three of the heroes can't really support him that well. So now Tinker walks in to get a laser off. Should blink out. But again, uh, the... What was it called? The Radiance is ticking on him. His Terrorblade's just having a lot of difficulty surviving. This Grave up. Grave is up. 
he does end up getting graved and grave will last i believe long enough now he gets rp like it's just such a rough game for this guy he's like frontlining alone and there's no help because everyone's everyone's like has to stay so far back so he's just trying his best to survive he did have sunder up last second but he's so far away so real quick let's just look at what the tinker was doing in this fight so staying really far back he's spamming his his uh marches his lasers his missiles etc Hex was not used, Hex now was used in this one, so he missed one Hex rearm. Not a big deal, these little things, but his spacing is good this fight. He's staying really far back. So in this fight, he's spacing really well. He's getting all his spells off, really well done spacing here. Like solid, solid spacing this fight, but it's a little too late, right? He messed up like five fights in a row. He messed up like five or six fights in a row, and then finally he starts spacing really well, but at this point, I feel like it was just too late. The enemy team is way, way too ahead. And the cores are just like really out of control. The cores are all maxed. Even like their Magnus, even their support is like doing work. Like their Slaughter is doing work in team fights. Their supports can't do that much in team fights. Like with Dazzle at this point of the game is not going to do much except for graving. You know, a little bit of healing and weave. Weave is just going to be his big contribution. But like as a solo core, like Terrible pretty much not a solo core, but as a solo like frontliner, there's no one else like backing him up. Uh, the only backup is Tinker, and Tinker had to play super far back. It's going to be really hard for him to do anything alone. So at this point of the game, I'm just kind of 16ing it. At this point of the game, it's like really hard for them to do anything. You could see, like, Tinker spaced really well, and it still wasn't enough. So pretty much I feel like there's going to be one more team fight, and they lose it, and the game's over. Okay, so they're pushing in. Someone just refreshed if I saw that correctly. Oh, it's Terrorblade. Terrorblade has a refresher. <laughs> so he, he met it and then he... Uh... Okay, so Tinker blinks in. Uh, realizes this then backs up. Of course, he didn't have a good opening. He should have marched before he refreshed. Laser a creep. Yep, he lasered a creep. Very good. Spamming missiles whenever he can. So pretty much just staying at the back. Laser and creeps so that it bounces off to do his thing. Missling, missling. He should be marching more often. He's not really marching much. And then here he bl again blinks really close. Like I know it's just a split second, but just stay away from the terror blade. That's what you want to do. You just want to stay away from the terror blade. Spectre's Aegis is down now, so this skewer is really bad for them. <laughs> this skewer makes it so it's impossible to help your terror blade. Right? He's way too deep. Like look where his team is. Right? His team is well positioned. This is a good position for where the terror blade was. But now with this skewer, like there's not much he can do. He's too deep. I believe they do go in and try to help him, and they all just end up wiping. Yeah, so this guy's about to res, you should hex him, very good hex. He ends up hexing this hex, if you hex him again, you will get hexed yourself. But you can BKB hex, perfect! So, if he hexed him right there, he would've got hexed, but he did end up pulling his BKB just to hex again, because of the Lotus Orb. Uh, he has no mana at all, so what you should do is blink back and TP out, that's all you can do. Blink back, TP out. Perfect, yep. So that was well done. That this fight, he played it really well so far. He's terribly... <laughs> It's just RP'd all day. He can get the Sunder off. Yeah, he just Sundered an illusion. He doesn't care. He just wants to get it off. That was really good. Tinker got, got his travels too. So he did TP. This is deep. I don't like this. This was bad. Okay, so this TP was really bad. So Tinker did heal. I, I like the fact that he's healing. So he's in base healing. He should be dropping his items in Baldwin. Which he's not doing. He's not dropping his items and bottling just so he can heal faster. So especially in, in, a, in a time like this, like this team fight, you definitely want to get in there as fast as possible, get back in there as fast as possible. And he wasn't doing that. And you can see he's coming back with 500 mana, right? So by the time he TPs in, he'll probably have half mana. Whatever. He just wants to get back in as fast as possible. But this TP, I don't like this. TPing on top of literally where everyone's hitting. He should have TP'd on this right here, right? TP right here. This is perfect. He found the range creeps. You know Spectre's going forward, so you'll be safe. And then you can do what you want. Let's see what happens when he TPs into 5 heroes. So he was not able to blink. He gets a laser off, he's still not able to blink. He's just in between 5 people. He's trying to rearm. And he does not get the blink off again. Because again, you're in between too much and ends up dying. So this TP definitely should have been TPing back here. Would have been a lot better. And I'm pretty sure the game's just over at this point. Right? Like, it's over. I don't think we need to even check. 100% it's over. So... Yeah, they thrown them. So... 
Tinker's spacing throughout the game was here and there, but in the end of the game, like the later stages, it was uh, a very poor spacing. Forced a lot of buybacks on himself that he didn't really want to do. And then the la la later, the very late uh, stages of the game where I'm pretty sure the game was already over, like Virtus Pro already won at that point. Uh, those fights, he did really well. Good spacing overall. Again, that last fight, good spacing overall. Just the TP in, he TP'd to the wrong place. He should have TP'd to the back creeps instead of right on top of him. But yeah, so just remember whenever you're playing Tinker, just try to space it. Uh, uh, try to work on your positioning as best as you can. Try to get all your spells off uh, without uh, dying, pretty much. It's, that's the best way for me to say it. That's like the simplest way for me to say it, is to just get your spells off without dying. So for him, uh, he blinked in too deep too many times and got RP'd. It should be really hard for Magnus to RP you as a Tinker. It should be really, really hard. All you need to do is stay away from your Terror Blade. Cast your spells at the back. He wasn't also marching enough. He should have been marching on top of him more often. But, um, of course, these things, whatever, that's not game winning or game losing stuff, but these are just improvements that I feel like you could have done. Just remember, as an observer, it's a lot easier to see these mistakes, of course. As a player, you're focused on actually playing Dota, and as a player, of course, you're focused on playing, you're focused on on what you're, what you're trying to do for your team, and less on what is the best possible play. As an observer, of course, your brain's just fully focused on watching the game and not playing, so... You, you don't have to multitask as much and it's a lot easier to see mistakes at that point of course if I was in this position I'd be making way more mistakes obviously playing against an amazing team like that so you can't judge him for for his positioning displays but generally speaking of course he made a lot of mistakes in terms of positioning in the mid and late game uh, and I feel like that ended up actually snowballing VP into a victory if he didn't do those like few blink mistakes if he didn't do those few crucial mistakes where i ended up dying and buying back and stuff like that i think they actually could have uh, mega them way earlier like they actually could have got the megas way earlier and then maybe who knows at that point of course vp can't deal with megas because of empower but generally speaking uh, <laughs> the fact that they they're mega they're not gonna they're not gonna of course the chance of winning is diminished greatly so i feel like this game was like a coin flip anyone could have won it and it ended up uh, being a win for VP due to the fact that just the team fighting uh, for TNC just wasn't quite there. So as always, thanks for watching. Please leave a comment below. In our next video, we're going to be talking about fighting around objectives with Tinker.